Due to criminalization of drugs, people who use them face stigma and discrimination every day from their family, friends, and society. This stigma breaks down trust, causes shame and marginalization, and even stops people from accessing help when they need it. The way you speak is important. While harmful language like junkie, addict, and druggy should never be used, it's far more nuanced than that. When we're talking about words to be avoided when referring to people who use drugs, I always like to start off around like drug abuser. Um, you know, I think if we look at the way people are treated and whatnot, and we look at it as, you know, they're abusing drugs, then we're going to look at it in a more negative way than if they're just using drugs. But also like things like, you know, junkie or drug fiend or um, druggy. I think, you know, any of these things that puts the drug before the person really kind of diminishes the way that we look at the, the people. And maybe we're looking more at, you know, their drug use rather than them as a person. And we can't look at somebody and just identify them as an addict. There's so much more than that. Words have the power to make people feel welcome and safe. You can help clear the path of stigma and provide the way to support. One simple rule that helps tackle stigma is to always put the person first. Don't define people by their drug use or diagnosis. Instead of drug user, drug abuser, or druggies, say people who use drugs. Instead of addict, drug abuser, or substance abuser, say a person experiencing drug dependence. Instead of clean, drug-free, ex-user, relapse, or recovered, say someone who has previously used drugs or someone who is currently using drugs. And instead of saying clean or dirty, say positive or negative drug screen. While it's okay in written communication, never reduce people to an acronym like PWID or IDU when you're speaking. When talking about or to people who use drugs, I like to see people focusing on doing the simple things well. People who use drugs are other human beings after all. So I think it's worth thinking about what you're going to say and think, how would I feel if I was that person? If I'd walked a mile in that person's shoes, how would what I'm going to say come across? How would it feel? I think this is a really great way to open up connection and empathy and close off those opportunities for othering and separation. Language is complex and evolves in different situations. Some language might be okay when used within a community to claim identity, but stigmatizing when used by others. I'm part of a 12-step fellowship. My 12-step fellowship uses language such as addict and clean. I don't personally have an, an issue with saying, hi, I'm Louise, I'm an addict. I don't have an issue with it. But when I'm now at work and working with communities, I don't talk about myself being clean. I don't say I'm nearly 20 years clean. I say I'm nearly 20 years abstinent from drugs or I'm nearly 20 years drug free because the opposite of clean is dirty. Communication isn't just verbal either. It's about tone and body language too. It's important also to be aware of how something is said, you know, the strength or the vehemence in which something is said, those small hesitations or that inherent fear behind something that is said. Uh, these things, you know, they might be imperceptible to some, but people who use drugs really clock these things, you know, and they can really get in the way of having a meaningful conversation. But more importantly, in my experience, those things can be really hurtful and even degrading and dehumanizing. So it's really important to think about both what you're saying and how you're saying it. All people deserve respect and support, not judgment. Always emphasize the person first. Ask people how they want to be referred to. Be aware of context. Communities may use certain words, but they may not be acceptable outside of that community. Be aware of tone and body language. Choose language that empowers rather than victimizes, blames, or dehumanizes words matter. Um, people are people. They're not patients. They're not diseases. They're not they're, they're drug use. And the way that we treat people is very important to all that. If we're going to be working with people who use drugs, then we have to acknowledge that they're people first and that they use drugs second. <laughs>